Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about linear relationships. So we have talked already about linear equations, simultaneous linear equations and inequalities. And we briefly introduced some basic quadratic equations. So at this point I think we need to actually get started on the concept of graphs and also linear relationships. So whenever you're modeling the the, I guess the relationship between two different variables, so for example y and x, there is usually a way in which you can calculate one from the other and essentially the way that we do that is through the, the use of something like a relationship or just a function. This is something that we'll call a function. So what it means is that for any value of x that you put in here you're gonna get a different value of y and then if you were to plot all those single values on a Cartesian plane, so x, y axis, you would see something like a straight line. Now, it really depends on what you have here, because um, normally you only see a straight line if you have x to the power of 1 here. And basically, the way you do it is, you're going to plug, uh, select a few values of x, you're going to plug them into this equation, and then you're going to calculate the different y values for that. So basically for this equation what you're going to calculate is a set of points on the Cartesian plane where x is the x coordinate and y is the y coordinate. And there really isn't much more to it, it's just this concept is so useful in so many areas, engineering, science, finance, you're gonna see linear relationships everywhere you go. You, you cannot escape them, there's no way to escape them, you have to you have to do linear relationships, whether you like them or not. But I'm going to show you that they're actually quite simple, and you can do so much stuff with them, it's actually quite amazing, because they not only show you how something is changing with respect to something else, they can also be quite useful for uh, basically constructing geometries on the plane, so you can construct polygons, you can construct triangles, and a lot of different interesting things uh, by using a very systematic method. Uh, here. So what I'm going to do in this video is introduce you to the concept of how you plot something like this on the Cartesian plane and then in the next few videos we're going to do some more um, actual problems involving linear relationships so you learn how to manipulate them, how to calculate things from them and all those different things. So I guess the first crucial point to make here is that in order to plot a linear relationship, so as an example let's uh, plot the, t the following two equations by by choosing values of x between minus 3 and 3. So notice that this is an inequality and it is telling us that we can choose x to be equal or greater than minus 3 or equal or less than 3. Normally when you're plotting stuff you just want to select integers even though you could, you could really just choose any value between those two um, constraints. So you could choose a rational number, uh, any decimal, but generally using integers is a lot easier. So what we normally do is we construct a little table. So we're going to put all the x values here. So let's start from minus 3, then minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then on the second row of this table, we're going to have the y values. Now in order to calculate the y values, what we need to do is we're going to plug in the values of x into this equation. So we're going to start with part a. So let me just try and draw a table here. Hopefully it turns out not too bad because I'm not using a ruler. So let's see how it goes. It's not, that's okay, I guess. So we have a table of values. So what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate y based on this. So to start off with, we're gonna have x plus two. So that means that we're gonna grab this value of x and add two to it. So minus three plus two is minus one. Then we have minus 2 plus 2 is going to be 0. Then minus 1 plus 2 is going to become 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. And we can see that the there is a pattern that emerges. So, so with uh, linear equations, you can usually see the same increase or decrease in the values of y. So that's how, you, that's how you identify a linear relationship. So we can infer that this is going to be 3, 4, and 5, simply by putting those values into this equation here. Okay, what we're going to do now with this table is we're going to plot all these values on the Cartesian plane. 
So generally what I like to do is I like to draw the axis so that I have enough room to draw all the points. So we're going to start with minus 3 here, minus 2, minus 1, then we have 0 right in the middle, then 1, 2, and 3. It's not a perfect graph, but it's going to be good enough for our purposes. And then for y, what we want to do is we want to include enough values here so we can plot them. So we have minus 1, and then every other value is going to go up. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to plot each point individually. So we're going to take this set of values, that's going to be a single point, then this set of values is another point, and so on and so forth. So let's start with this one. We have x equals to minus 3, so we go minus 3 along the x-axis, and then minus 1 along the y-axis, so we're going to end up somewhere here. So that's going to be the point minus 3, minus 1. When we're drawing the line, we're, we don't actually need to, to specify each po point based on its coordinates. We just need to just put, uh, just draw the point there and then just join the dots, as we would normally do. Then for x, what we have is minus 2 and 0. So this is the second point. Minus 2 and 0 here, so that's basically just going to be this one. Then we're going to go with the third one, that's minus 1 and 1, so we have minus 1 on x and 1 across y. So we're going to be somewhere here. Then the next one is 0 and 2, so we have 0 on the x, 2 on the y. Then 1 and 3, so we go up here and here. Then 2 and 4. And the final one is going to be 3 and 5. So we're gonna leave it here. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna join all these dots. So in the end you should actually get a, a straight line. So it would look something like this. Now obviously mine is not gonna look like a perfect straight line because I'm not using a ruler. But if you use a ruler and you do it in your books, you should be able to see a perfectly straight line between those points. And that that's basically what it is. So you might be asking, why is this useful? Well, it turns out that simply by knowing a few points, you could even plot this by using only two points, that you can pretty much just draw your line for as long as you want, and then you can pretty much find any value by looking at the graph. So for example, if I were to tell you what is the value of y when x is equal to 1.5, for example, we haven't calculated that, and but all we can do is we just move up all the way here until we reach the line, and then we move all the way here, and then from that we should be able to more or less just approximate the value of y at that point. So graphs like this are really useful for reading values of data, and, and you will see this done quite a lot in science and, and business and finance and pretty much every field that applies mathematics, you're going to see straight line relationships like that. Now for the second example, we can do the same. So we're going to establish a table like this, and then we're going to plug in the values of y. Now in this case, just to make things shorter, I'm going to let you calculate those, but I'm just going to give you the final value so that we can plot the, the function straight away. So we start with minus 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So same thing as before. The only thing that is going to change are the values of y. Okay, so we start with minus two, plus, minus 2 times x plus 2. So in this case, we're going to get the following values. I'm going to let you calculate this on your own. It's pretty much just putting numbers in the calculator. I mean, it's not very challenging in any way. Minus 2, minus 4. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plot this on the Cartesian plane. So let me just try and draw it very nicely this time. So I not have a ruler here on my tablet, but I'm going to try and do my best. So let's do minus 1 here. Then let me do minus 2 over here. And then minus 3. Maybe just put it somewhere here. And now let's look at the, the actual range and y. So the minimum value on y is minus 4. So it's going to be somewhere here. 
then we have minus 2, 0, and then it keeps going up in units of 2. So we have 2, 4, 6, and the maximum is 8. So that's our y, that's our x. And then we have 1, 2, and 3 here. Okay, so we're going to start doing the same thing we did in the, in the previous example. We're going to grab each pair of values and plot a point on the Cartesian plane based on that. So we have minus 3 and 8, so that's going to be somewhere here. It's going to be that point there. The second one is minus 2 and 6, so we have point somewhere here. Then minus 1 and 4, that's going to be here. 0 and 2, here. Then we have 1 and 0, so that one, that one there. 2 and minus 2, so we have 2 on the x-axis, minus 2 on the y. And then we have 3 and 4, so 3 and minus 4. Okay, so now we have a bunch of points, and we can join the dots, and hopefully that turns out to be uh, a straight line as well. And it is a straight line, it's just that, since I don't have a ruler on me, that's as straight as I can draw it. But you can imagine that that's basically uh, the idea behind linear relationships. And now from that, what we can do is we can actually find any value in between without even having to calculate it. We can just look at the graph and say, okay, so what's the value when x is minus 2.8? Then we just grab the point here, look at the graph, and then just look for the point on the, on the line that matches that value. And we can calculate y, or we can do it the other way around. We can say, what is the value of x that corresponds to y equals to 5? And then we could do it, what we could do with that is we could say, okay, so we're just going to draw a line that reaches the, the straight line here, and then we just look for the value of x that corresponds to that. And it's quite useful to do things like that. So in the next few years, we're going to be expanding our knowledge on how to draw, uh, interpret, and calculate things based on linear relationships.